five facts about ideas. Ideas are creative energy in motion. And every invention began as an idea. To have an idea, you need to use imagination. Inventions are just like time machines because they make time management easier. Imagine having to weave your own cotton dress to look like this lady. Nature inspired many inventions. People longed to know about the stars, so they invented telescopes. Ocean life can inspire invention too. The US Navy studied jellyfish to create this water-powered robot. Look at all of these inventors. But we're gonna focus on one of the most important inventors that's ever lived. But before we do that, let's talk about Dr. Rupert Sheldrake. He was able to prove that ideas travel in an invisible field. And this field is called the morphic resonance field. Ideas traveling all around the earth at the speed of light using frequencies. Now, here's five facts about being an inventor. Invention can change the world. Inventors always ask a lot of questions. Why, how, and what if? Some inventions want to help animals live better lives. What would you like to make better? Write down your ideas because all inventors have to start somewhere. Make a prototype. Even Tony Stark had to build a prototype. All inventions must be tested before they can be shown to the world, so be patient. Inventors learn from failure before they succeed. Earth is home to millions of species of life. To be an inventor, you can collaborate with other people. My point? Inventors must have imagination because they must think differently, break a few rules, and have the courage to break the mold so that the world can change. And the good news is, playing is good exercise for your brain. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years. It has been my observation that advertising and publicity are the very backbone of earthly civilization. Spoken like a true Martian. In the hall of electricity, Nicholas stepped onto a stage. Tall, elegant, and proud, he grabbed the end of a wire and flicked a switch. More than 250,000 volts of electricity pulsed across his body. The crowd pressed back in alarm, expecting him to be burned or even worse. The Electrical Wizard, Elizabeth Roosh, illustration by Oliver Dominguez. In this episode of Imagination, we're going to learn about the greatest inventor who ever lived. Clean energy, what is it? We hear the term every day. Clean energy is something that Nikola Tesla felt very passionate about. He knew that the earth generated its own natural energy and he knew how to tap into that energy using the sun, wind, and the earth's magnetic fields. Nikola's belief was that there was no reason to use energy that destroyed nature. A lot of very powerful men did not like that. They wanted to make money and Tesla wanted to change the world without destroying it. Now in the 21st century, we are finally using Tesla's inventions for clean energy, but we're still behind what Tesla had envisioned. And he never stopped inventing. His goal was to try and sell something so he'd get the money, go back to Wardenclyffe, and complete his, his baby, which was a world global system to transmit light, voice, pictures, and power to all points of the globe. And he was trying to attach our technology to the wheel work of nature, harnessing geothermal power, the tides, wind, and sun. He did not want to sap the earth of our natural resources. These appliances all work because one man had a dream. Few, however, know the inventor's name, 
or recognize his face. He is Nikola Tesla. In his time, he was a respected member of the scientific elite, a friend of theorist Albert Einstein, a colleague of inventor Charles Steinmetz. Niagara Falls was the scene of one of his greatest achievements. On an island between the thundering torrents, virtually ignored, stands the only United States monument to the remarkable achievements of a forgotten scientist, Nikola Tesla. Only a few quiet monuments were built to honor the futuristic wizard of light and innovation. Before Nikola was bullied into silence, Mr. Tesla was on top of the world. The Chicago World's Fair had electricity in abundance. Nikola had figured out spacecraft, free energy, magnetic imaging machines, the X-ray, and he had even contacted outer space radio transmissions. So why was he bullied into silence? Nikola's inventions came into his brain, fully formed and by the hundreds. His enthusiasm and brilliance scared people. Nikola's good friend, the famous author and humorist Mark Twain, said of Tesla, anytime you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. Listen next week to a tale titled, The Man Who Knew Too Much. Nicola's ideas never stopped rushing into his brain. And as fast as he wrote one down, the next one was in the waiting room of his mind, pounding on the door. He rarely slept or ate, streaming like the endless data of the internet, a supercomputer unlike anything we have now. Nicola believed... He must surf the tidal wave of his own creativity, or he would be drowned in his madness. Want to know what was in Nikola Tesla's mind? Everything. to teach you now about the key to the universe. It's called Vortex Math. If you knew the importance of the numbers 3, 6, and 9, you would know the secret to the entire universe. What is it about 3, 6, and 9? The Earth and all of its spheres are 360 degrees around. Cut that in half, cut them in half, and the Earth is 180 degrees. So let's do some math. 3, 6, 0, right? 3 plus 6 plus 0 equals 9. 180 degrees is in half, so let's add it. 1 plus 8 plus 0 equals 9. What about the moon? 360 degrees around the moon as well. 3 plus 6 plus 0 equals 9. The moon is 2,160 miles around. Let's do the math. 2 plus 1 plus 6 plus 0 equals 9. The earth is 7,920 miles around, so let's do the math. 7 plus 9 plus 2 plus 0 equals 18. 1 plus 8 equals 9. Okay, if you're still not seeing it, what about this? The orbital period of the sun, or cosmic year, is 225 million years. So let's add up those numbers. Also, the sun has a radius of 432,450 miles. So let's do the math. What is all this math called? It's called vortex math, or sacred geometry. Here's the Pyramid of Giza, three, six, and nine. The Great Pyramid was built using three, six, and nine. Pythagoras and Kepler and da Vinci, among others, used this same mathematical system. circle a building nine times. He would find hotel rooms that added up to nine.
Ready to unlock the magic? Here we go. Get a piece of paper and a pen, or a crayon, or anything. On a piece of paper, write down the numbers, one through nine. Let's add them up just like this. You've just heard chapter nine, nine. They all equal nine. Okay, so we know that one through nine added up is 45. Four plus five equals nine. Draw a circle. You'll notice the inner degrees are 90. That's a right angle. They all equal nine. Okay, let's do this, 45 degrees. Huh? Nope, still equals nine. Remember, we always reduce down to a single number. Let's start with the first number, because you're number one. So let's duplicate it. One plus one equals two. Okay, we created two. Duplicate it. Two plus two equals four. Duplicate it. So where are three, six, and nine? What if we only reduce the number and start with a new line of duplicated numbers? Will we still have the same result? We always get this pattern of one, two, four, eight, seven, five, one, two, four, eight, seven, five, one, two, four, eight, seven, five. What's missing? Three, six, and nine. Is there some kind of divine code within this math? Nikola Tesla says yes. Okay, let's take a circle. Put a triangle in a circle. Each angle is 60 degrees. We'll use multiplication. It equals nine. What about a square? 90 degrees, 90 degrees, three plus six plus zero is nine. Each angle here, and there's five of them, 108 times five is 540 degrees, which reduces to nine. This one has six, 120 times six, it reduces to nine. This has eight sides to it, 135 degrees, so one plus zero plus eight plus zero, nine. Okay, this one has nine, always equaling nine. This one, 10 sides, always equaling nine. So we observed that when we bisect a circle like this, the resulting angle always reduces to nine, converging into what's called a singularity or infinity. The nine reveals a linear duality. That's for the older kids. So it's either a singularity or it's a vacuum. Nine is all things, and nine is no things. Nine is matter, or nine is antimatter. The sum of all digits, excluding nine, is 36. Three plus six is nine. Nine plus any digit returns the same digit. Nine plus five equals 14. One plus four equals five. So nine quite literally equals all the digits and also nothing. Taking us full circle. Just another adventure into the unknown world of the future. The world of... Dimension When 
Albert Einstein was asked how it felt to be the smartest person in the world, he replied, I don't know. You'll have to ask Nikola Tesla.